Hello and welcome to another Ableton Live tutorial. My name is Don Philip and today we are looking at the Groove Pool in Ableton Live. So to what we're going to be doing with the Groove Pool is we're going to be using the Groove Pool in a creative way. Uh, we're going to be using it to add some dynamics to our music. So this is a, this is you know a, um, a technique that I like to use with Groove Pool and I hope you guys have fun with it too. So I'm going to just go ahead and play something that I have over here. Right? So I have a bunch of uh, percussion sounds, uh, two melody lines that are working with each other. And we're going to use Groove Pool to add some dynamics to the sound. So to understand Groove Pool, we have to understand what is Groove. Um, in the context of Ableton Live, Groove is a manipulation of both time and velocity. Uh, so what that helps to do, it helps to add a more natural sound uh, to some of the sounds that we're working in within our project. Um, you know, you can change, uh, you know, slight variations in time, which kind of humanizes uh, the music that you're working with, as well as velocity. So in this case over here, let's look at our beat section first. So in our beat section, I have a shaker, right? Let's just play this. So I have the shaker. I have a drum kit. And I have a little percussive section. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a groove in order to, you know, kind of liven this up. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get into the groove pool. So you can see this little wavy icon on the left. I'm just going to click on that and it opens up my groove pool. Now, the next thing I can do is I can right click. I can browse my groove library. And you can see in my library, I have a bunch of grooves that I can select from over here. Now, these will add, again, variations in time and velocity um, to the clip in selection. But instead of doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract grooves from within my current project. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go ahead to my shaker. You can see my shaker over here. And if I right click on my shaker, I can extract the groove from that actual shaker. So I'm going to extract that groove and it's going to take a couple of seconds. So what it's going to do is it's going to read that um, that audio clip over there and extract uh, timing information as well as velocity information. And as you can see in my groove pool, the groove has now loaded. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a duplication of this groove. I'm hitting Command D and I've made a duplication. And I'm going to on the first um, groove, I'm going to go ahead and put my velocity at 100%. And on the second one, I'm going to put my velocity at minus 100%. Now, what this is going to do is, this is going to define how much the clip is going to follow the groove's velocity, the velocity set in the groove. So on one, I've set it to follow it at 100%, and the other, uh, the other groove is following at uh, minus 100%, which is basically the opposite. So they're kind of counter to each other in terms of velocity. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is go into the clips. So I have my drum clip and my percussive clip. I'm going to open up my clip properties. And in the bottom left, under my clip properties, you can see I have my groove selection. I can select the groove from my groove pool. So for my drum kit, I'm going to go ahead and choose my first um, <clears throat> groove. And on my percussion, I'm going to send, I'm going to connect this to my second groove. All right. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to reduce this timing. Now, this timing, this percentage is similar as what you see in velocity. At 100%, it'll follow the timing of the groove. Um, for this exercise, I don't want the timing to go uh, out of sync too much or follow the groove too much. I just want to play around with velocity. So I'm going to bring down the timing to say, you know, around the range of 20%. Right. All right. So now that I have that, if I play my percussion okay now what's happening is my percussive sounds as well as my drum kit are now interacting with each other so when the vol velocity is high on one clip it's going to be low on the other and the same vice versa so they're going to keep countering each other so i can show you the difference if i remove uh, the groove so this is with the grooves on and i'll remove the grooves Right? So you can see it's a lot smoother when I have the grooves, you know, in place. Right? And just having them play with um, 
with the velocity and countering velocity to each other. Uh, it's a great way to bring percussive sounds together. Now, you don't have to limit this only to percussive sounds. This works great on melodies, especially if you're layering melodies. So in this case, if you can see on my lead group over here, I have two lead sounds, okay? One is a kind of muted piano, and I have a synth sound over here. So I'll just play them so you can hear them. This is the muted piano. And I also have this synth sound. And when I play them together, right? They play in this layer, right? They play in this layer together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing. So on the muted piano, in my clip properties, I'm going to send it to my first groove. And on my synth, I'm going to send that to my second groove. And now when I play them together, right, you can you can hear how now both those sounds are kind of playing with each other. You know, they're, they're, the velocity is going up and down accordingly and, and both relative to each other because we've set the velocity as such on the grooves. And now if I play everything together, right? So it gives the whole song, you know, this nice groovy sound where, you know, sounds are really melding together because we've made sure the velocities are matching. Now we can listen to how this sounds without the groove pulls on. So let's take off the groove pulls. And if I add the groove back, okay. so you can see how this interesting dynamic has just been added, um, you know, to my layers just by, you know, playing around with this groove pool. Now, another thing you can keep in mind is these grooves that, you know, I've loaded into my groove pool are nothing but MIDI information. So what I can actually do is I can take one of these grooves and just drag it and drop it onto a MIDI track like what I did here. And you notice that I can see the individual MIDI hits as well as the velocity information at the bottom. So if I wanna make changes to the groove myself and create my own unique groove, I can do that here and just drag it and bring it back into my groove pool and I can have a unique groove to play with. So this is an interesting way to create, um, you know, some nice meshes between grooves, uh, to create some dynamics between your sounds, and to really get an interesting flow, um, you know, between the different sections of your song. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this, there's something you can take back from this and add to your own projects and really bring in some dynamics with some simple techniques. Uh, again, if you liked the video, make sure to leave a like. If you loved it, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.